Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a magnetic excursion update Thursday, July 3rd, around 10 p.m. Mountain Time, 2025. NASA confirms that a mysterious object shooting through the solar system is an interstellar visitor, and it has a new name. Also, the largest gigantic jet ever photographed has been captured over Texas, by the International Space Station. Buckle up, we've got a lot to talk about. And keep calm, it's boom time. And happy 4th of July, happy Independence Day. I hope you're spending time with friends and family tomorrow and enjoying the freest, best country in the world. And have fun at work tomorrow, England. Big heat coming to the western U.S. following Independence Day weekend. Heat is poised to build over much of the western United States next week and may challenge the highest temperatures of the season so far, along with boosting an already volatile wildfire risk. The heat will arise following a typical summer condition for much of the west for the Independence Day weekend, and it will also be very dry as well. Well, let's walk through the heat here. We're looking at the thermodynamics map, and you can see the west temperature is 101 in the Southern California Valleys, 102 uh, in southwestern Arizona. So watch those regions as the temperatures increase here. Here are the temperatures for July 5th, Saturday, July 5th. It's going to be 104 at that junction of Arizona and California there, Death Valley region. Uh, on the 6th, 107 for the high temperature. On the 7th, 111 for the high temperatures. The hundreds move all the way down uh, into Mexico there along the Baja coast. So very hot by Monday. And here is July 8th. It looks like 108. And so an extended heat wave. And again, 108 for the 9th. 115 for the 10th, that could be record territory. And then moderating here, 106 for the 11th, 105 for the 12th, 108 for the 13th. So this is an 112 for the 14th. So this is an extended heat wave in Southern Arizona that will be epic as well as the valleys here. Look at that 110 Friday, July 11th. And the Atlantic hurricane season could get its third name storm just in time for the 4th of July weekend. Emerging here, potentially offshore of Florida in the Atlantic. There is disturbance number one, now a 60% chance of cyclone formation in the next seven days. And a quick look over at Tornado HQ. Let's take a look at where the severe weather warnings are happening now. We've got... Just five severe weather warnings across the lower 48. Oregon, California, North Dakota included. Here is the severe weather map. We do have a special marine warning right off the sh uh, coast of central Jersey there. And you can see where the severe weather is. To get live updates, head over to tornadohq.com for live severe weather alerts. And now the full forecast. Above normal temperatures and strong thunderstorms with tropical development being monitored. Well, above normal temperatures are forecast to shift from the northern plains through the northeast U.S. over the long holiday weekend. A few strong to severe thunderstorms will be possible as well, along with the potential for excessive rainfall. Good news here. We had rain today and we had a fire watch that bans smoking outdoors, and that has been canceled, so we'll be able to have fireworks tomorrow in town. Good news there. A tropical or subtropical depression could form off the southeast coast in the next few days, um, so we'll keep a close eye on that for you. So here are the updates. We've got some bad air, so let's take a look at the fire and smoke map, shall we? And indeed, the Canadian wildfires have gone buck wild, especially in the central provinces here. We see multiple fires and plumes adding to the big picture. 
and a lot of dirty air in the Great Lakes and the Northeast. This is where the hardest hit regions are, as well as down here in Baja, where we've got fires burning everywhere. Now, the good news is by mid-July, the entire West is going to be getting a great monsoon this year. So a lot of this moisture is going to be coming up into the region in the West and is going to be quelching most of these fires in just the next few weeks. Mark my words. But until then, and hopefully the Canadian fires will be put out too as well in July because, well, other than beautiful sunsets, it's very bad air quality and we should not be breathing this. And here is the GFS model. We'll run it through for you for Friday so you can see the severe weather threats. Saturday here up to the northern tier, northern plains and the Great Lakes into Sunday. And now Monday, so most of the activity Monday is going to be central U.S. and east, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And that is far out on the models, but it looks like late next week, the east coast could be lighting up with some severe weather. Let's take a look at the total accumulated precipitation, see if we have any flooding threats in the next few days. It may take a few seconds to parse up here. Yeah. Not really until July 8th here where we see an explosion in South Dakota and Nebraska. So there could be some flash flooding here in the purples and the pinks. And you can see here how the Four Corners is starting to get some moisture here as well as the rest of the West as the models go through July 19th. So that's good news there. Seismic update. Well, no quakes of note. Pretty normal activity worldwide. Where's this rumbler? We've got a 2.9 out in Jamestown, Wyoming. That's an interesting locale. Some uptick here in Alaska, but normal activity worldwide. As we take a look at some of the data from the past three months at Kilauea, here is the electronic tilt at the Kilauea summit. And what you can glean from this data set is that... Let's look at the original. There it is that for the last three months, we've got eruptions occurring. So these marks here are 10 day spans, 555, 515, 525, 64, 614, 624. An eruption is occurring every seven to 10 days. And you can see here, it was a 10 and a half, 11 days, six days, seven days, 10 days, and we're rising back up since the last eruption. So in the next three to five days will be the next eruptive phase. And you can see the amount of inflation and deflation. That is the height of the fountaining. The episode two ago was major fountaining, and you could see the major dips there. We also had major fountaining during this event back in April. And so this ongoing event has a periodicity where you get a big, long one and some shorter ones, and then it grows up to big, bigger, and then shorter and shorter and big, and maybe the next one will be even bigger. So three to five days for the next eruptive phase at Kilauea. And that brings us to Worldwide Volcano News. And the first on the list is Kirishima Volcano in Japan. 14,000 foot blast there. Probably in honor of the 4th of July. Ibu to 7,000 feet. We've got some photos here of Kirishima. Uh, in Japan, degassing in small ash continues today. Raventador to 14,000 feet. Kirishima, a big blast over the degassing to 22,000 feet. This baby started puffing and passing seven days ago at just six, 7,000 feet. We reported on it getting to eight and 10. I claimed an uptick three days ago. And well, the numbers don't lie. 22,000 foot blast today is the highest event in the series. Dukono to 7,000 feet. Semadu, who knew? Now you do. Volcanic eruption reported today. Shivalush, no volcanic ash uh, identifiable today. Popo to 20,000 foot. Kirishima, an 11,000 foot puff there. Raung to 12,000 foot today. Santa Guito to 14,000 foot. We've got Dukono to 9, Popo to 20,000. Shivalush to 10,000 feet. Liwotolo, 6,000 foot puff there. Kirishima, 10,000 foot blast. Ibu to seven wraps up worldwide volcano news. And now 
we get some of the good photography here. This is a giant jet photographed above Texas, extending all the way to space. Yes, it's electric, folks. And this is the largest gigantic jet ever captured by the ISS, the International Space Station. And what you can see here on the photo, the curvature, yeah, it's because we live on a globe, not on a flat plane. And here is that location, the probable location of the gigantic jet, 1.30 a.m. Central Time, over southwest Texas. And that brings us to space weather for the 4th of July, UTC. No flaring. We're down in the B range, B9 currently, X-rays. X, X KP is approaching KP4, and that's because the BZ shifted south for the last 12 hours. You can see where that geomagnetic storm is forecast uh, in the last 24 hours. It did occur, but nothing spectacular occurred. The KP barely got into geomagnetic storm. Uh, and we're back up with the BZ south, so there is some aurora potential for the southern hemisphere as well as the northern hemisphere. But this is going to wane all night. And we did have a major prominence eruption today as well. So one of the sunspot regions that turned around the limb made a big boom or a plasma filament erupted because the earth-facing quiet is real. And so when will that end? It's anyone's guess. Cross your fingers. NASA's Lucy mission provides a full view of asteroid Donald Johansson. And take a look, it's a barbell. This is due to electrical scouring, north and south pole barbell asteroid in electrical phase scours its own self. And we've seen the majority of objects that are moving around the solar system that are not planets have this barbell shape. We've seen it in comets. We've seen it in asteroids. <clears throat> they still call asteroids rocks and they still call comets dirty snowballs. There is zero evidence that a comet has any snow or ice on it. Comets are not dirty snowballs. Comets are asteroids that are electric. That's the difference. Asteroids are in the off phase of electrical dynamics, and comets are still electrically active. That's the only difference. Right here, asteroid Lionel Johansson was once a comet, and it was electric, which caused this scouring pattern, and now it's off. It's no longer glowing. There's no tail. It's just an asteroid now. This is how stupid astrophysicists are and cosmologists. Why they can't smell the coffee is anyone's guess. It's sickening. It's almost like they're retarded. NASA confirms that a mysterious object shooting through the solar system is an interstellar visitor, and it has a new name. Experts have confirmed that the mysterious object hurtling towards us, previously dubbed A11PL3Z, is in fact an interstellar object. The cosmic interloper is now officially named 31 Atlas. It's only the third interstellar object ever identified, ever and it will shoot past Earth later this year, and we'll have a lot to talk about in the meantime. And if you want to know more, you can watch it live online today. I will leave you links to this article where there's a one-hour expose on A11PL33Z, which is now 31 Atlas. And a new geology paper coming out today Study unearths how copper deposits are formed is fascinating. So if you're interested in what hydrothermal events occur, oxidization, melt fluids, partial melting in the hydrated mantle wedge uh, on subduction zones, we can learn a lot about copper. Check out the paper. Check out the article. Everything will be linked below. And silver exploding over the last three months to decadal highs headed to a new all-time high above 50 bucks an ounce, according to all analysts. Do not miss out and hedge your bets. The stock market will collapse in the near future. Precious metals will continue to go up as the strength of the dollar decreases. So convert your IRAs now into precious metals. 
There are no penalties. It's free and use the industry leader Gold Co. From precious metal IRAs to direct purchases of gold and silver, they've helped thousands of Americans diversify and protect their savings and their retirement. Request your free 2025 gold and silver kit. Get a free silver coin. And if you convert over $100,000 in your IRA, there are huge silver bonuses up to $15,000. No obligation. Get the free gold and silver kit. Well, and protect your retirement, your savings, your livelihood. It's that simple. The industry leader is Gold Co. Go to diamondlovesgold.com. And that's a boom to knowledge. Please have a wonderful Independence Day. We are the best, freest country on earth, and you deserve to celebrate at least one day. We love each and every one of you. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and be safe. We will be posting a video tomorrow. We love you. And that is a boom. Ding, ding, ding.